What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. In this episode, I'm gonna go over this little budget build and how I made this razor go 35 miles an hour for under 500 bucks. Let's go. If you haven't noticed, the Razor craze is off the charts. Modified Razor dirt bikes, modified Razor crazy carts, modified Razor scooters, modified Razor everything, okay? And on this channel, I go over how to modify them in various different ways, the components and what goes into these things to make them go 35 miles an hour or 75 miles an hour. Check out the playlist. I'll put a stream right here so you guys can watch it. But anyway, enough blabbing, let's get to work. All right guys, so here we are in the garage. These are the batteries that I was talking about in these razors. The one thing with these batteries, if you look here, it only has this plug. And this is not a razor plug. This is like a mobility scooter type plug. So what we gotta do is we gotta open up this case. It's easier than it sounds. And we're gonna put in this little XT60 splitter, right? One side's gonna go on the battery. One side's gonna go on this charge port. And then we're going to send one side out so you guys can charge it. Keep in mind, a gentleman in the Facebook group by the name of Ryan Goodyear has a, an eBay store. I'll put a scroll here of this store. He is developing a plug and play connection for these batteries that will run your bike with no modifications needed. And while you're on the store, he also has other things that are razor specific and non razor specific. Back to the battery. So if you get your battery and you're like, ah, how do I take it apart? The way. To take the handle off instead of trying to fight with trying to peel this handle back to expose the screws underneath on the side here there's little plugs on either side take you a small screwdriver pull the rubber plugs out and then just punch the pin that's holding the handle in through one of the sides that'll loosen the handle and it'll expose the screws underneath that you need to access in order to take the battery apart save these don't lose these they have a little plastic piece on it that holds the case top on so now we can take this we're gonna everything we're gonna do in here we're gonna try to be as gentle as possible there's probably gonna be some adhesive or some some epoxy on the bottom of this right there all right we also have this case right here this top case that wants to come off so now that we have this open you can see here this red and black hopefully you guys can see that this red and black this is going to the charge port underneath this case is an xt60 open this dude up Ta -da. check that dude out so here's what we're going to do we're going to disconnect this xt60 right here boom we're going to install this little guy right here boom he's like that this little guy goes back to our charger right here, boom. And then this little guy right here, this is where we're gonna run out the side of the case and it's going to provide power to the controller. I wanna be as least invasive as I can with this, this stuff. There's separate wires inside here that I'm trying to be cognizant of. I don't wanna pull in this loose, but Inside this battery right here, there's a little bit of a spot where this connection is just gonna sit. I'm gonna stuff this connection in there. I'm gonna put this paper back over it. And with this here, this is a 5 8 inch paddle bit. I'm gonna send this guy right outside this case. Put a little bit of a hole right here. Something like this. This is not a science. they not to be perfect. That's that. Do take our other side, clean that up a little bit. This guy's gonna go through here. I'm like, yay. Now we got everything back flat. Put our screws back in. Make sure these tabs are on top of the top plate. That's what these are for. So when you tighten this screw down, this little tab it makes contact with this top plate and sandwiches it. 
these batteries are kind of second hand so they've had a first life already when you get these you might have some cracks in the cases and some things like that nothing to really worry about as long as the cells are good you can have a crack in the case I'm not gonna damage it as long as the cells aren't damaged so what I'm gonna do here on this hole I don't want this exposed to the elements right so what I'm gonna show you next is what I did looks like I need to tighten that side down a little bit So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get a piece of plastic, a thin piece of plastic. You can use just about anything you can find. I'll probably use like a, 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 a pop bottle or a Coke bottle, whatever y'all call it, depending on where you're from. And I'm gonna try to make it, cover up as much of this space as I can uh, with that piece of plastic. And then I'm gonna use some black silicone and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna make sure that this is as watertight as I can get it. And the point of what I'm trying to do here is just trying to keep this as watertight as I can. And I'm probably gonna take another piece and come over the top from the other side and do the exact same thing. All right guys, so that is a way of doing this. This is not the way, this is not the way, this is just a way. If you are gonna do this and you're gonna run it with this style, you have to get a plug that fits inside here. And I'll put a screenshot of it. One of the downfalls of running this type of setup is this plug is pretty difficult to get. When I, I mean difficult, I don't mean hard, I just mean it takes a while. It's like a 10 day to a two week to sometimes three week lead time to get the plug to work this. So here is another alternative you can do that you don't have to wait for this plug. And what you have to do there is the same exact process as we did here, the same exact process to get this guy to come out. But what we're gonna do is take the battery apart and we're gonna put this connection inside the battery and we're gonna forego this dumb connection here all together and we're gonna stick two sides out of the side of the battery. What that's gonna do is that's gonna give you one side for designated charging and it's gonna give you one to connect to your controller. Too easy. While with your controller, you're just gonna need to install the opposing side of the XT60 on your controller so the battery can supply power to your system. All right guys, so now that we know how to break the battery down and make it work in our razors, Let's put it in the bike. Let's go get a speed test. Low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. Hustle lot, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. To the system, I don't wanna be a slave. I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway. And in the driveway, is a nice range. Cause I grind through the climb, I invite pain. You never hear me, bitch, nah, I don't come. We were all beginners once. We were all there. We all got bit by the bug. And then we upgrade 60 volt, 72 volt, 96 volt. You know, it just kind of, it just keeps escalating. The hobby keeps growing. People keep innovating. More and more things are coming to this market. And it's really awesome to see how this has really progressed over the last couple of years.